y'all, it's Belle. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. Hey, today is going to be a book haul. I'll put my hair up. As usual, I'll start with the books that were sent to me. The first book is 101 and a giveaway back in April, but they let me know that they wouldn't be able to mail it till like the end of May. So came Delilah and the Cracked Cauldron by Sarah Clavel. So excited. 12 year old Delilah Shaw hates that her mom moved them away from a bustling city to the small town of Marigold where nobody wants to be her friend. When she starts seeing strange things happen that no one else can, Delilah is convinced that their new home is cursed. But in Marigold, magic brews around every corner. Soon she must choose whether to follow in the footsteps of past witches or turn away from the magic like the rest of the town. Unfortunately, a witch's power can have unexpected consequences. Can Delilah learn how to handle the magic? Or is her mom hiding something about their family tree that will chill her to the bone? Love a good witchy story. Thank you so much. Random House Kids sent me Once in a Blue Moon by Sharon G. Flake. Highly anticipated release. I'm so excited. It looks like it is a novel in verse. How will you get to the sky if you don't get out the front door? M. Center used to be brave. He hasn't been the same since that fateful night at the lighthouse when his mom went searching for dog. Now, months later, he feels as small as the space between the numbers on a watch, nervous day and night, barely able to go outside. Even words have a hard time leaving his mouth. The only person he speaks to is Hattie, his courageous twin sister who fiercely protects him, especially from bullies. James Henry wants nothing more than to be brave again. However, finding his voice will mean confronting the truth about what happened at the lighthouse. A step James Henry isn't sure he can take until a blue moon is forecast. And as Grant has said, everything is possible under a rare blue moon. And when I opened this, I even said in the South, once in a blue moon is said a lot. I don't know if it's a Southern thing or if it's said everywhere. So just the title. And then it sounds like an incredible and emotional story. And then Algonquin Young readers reached out and asked if they could send me a copy of this. And I said, yes, because it's one of my most highly anticipated releases. Oh, and I'll edit in when this comes out. And I think this comes out July 11th. If I'm wrong, I'll edit that in here. But The Demon Sword Asperide. Jared, Sarah Jane Horwitz, author of The Dark Lord Clementine, which I also have and I need to read. So pretty. For the past 200 years, the demon sword Asperide has led a quiet life. While his physical form has been tasked with guarding the body of an evil sorcerer, the rest of his consciousness has taken a well-earned vacation. That constant need to trick humans into wielding him, the price of their very souls, of course, was rather draining. Knack Furnival, on the other hand, is far from satisfied with satisfied with his existence. Knack has trained since birth to be a brave and noble knight, but unfortunately he isn't especially good at it. Determined to prove his worth, Knack needs a quest, and to complete that quest, he'll need the one thing no knight can do without, a sword. When an attempt to resurrect the evil sorcerer throws Asperity Asperides into an axe path, the demon sword can't help but trick the boy into making a, a contract to become his new owner. And with the newly undead, and very, very angry, sorcerer on their trail, Asperides and Nack find themselves swept up in a bigger adventure than either of them bargained for, saving the world. So intrigued. Thank you so much, Algonquin. And then the other day when I needed it, the most a good, something to brighten the day a little bit, as much as it could be, um, I got a box full of these arcs. <laughs> So they're all ARCs, Advanced Readers copies, and Random House Kids sent them all. Thank you so much. There's two graphic novels, and since they're ARCs, the ARCs in black and white, which is fine. I'm so excited. Nail of Gumbling, My Extremely Normal Fairy Tale Life by Emma Steinkellner. They did the OK Witch graphic novel, so I'm so excited. I don't know if I'm allowed to show the ARCs, I'm not going to. You might think that the town of Gumbling is like something out of a storybook, but to me, it's just home. I mean, sure, my dad's run a magic star farm, my best friend Myra is a fairy, and my second best friend Gil is as small as my thumb. But I'm just like any other kid, except that one day I'm going to be a world famous artist. That's why I just had to lay my dream apprentice with the Wiz Bravo. Too bad that instead I'm apprenticed to boring Mrs. Birdneck in the town archives. How am I ever supposed to become a real artist if I'm stuck in the moldy dungeon of the Castle Memorial Community Center? Having the world's worst apprenticeship is bad enough, but now there's some weird strangers hanging around town and talking about turning Gumbling into a fancy resort. Everyone is completely freaking out about it, and all Myra seems to care about is saving the town without me. I just want this school year to have a happily ever after, but that might not be so easy. And this comes out in September. And the graphic novel adaptation of Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library by Chris Gravenstein, illustrated by Douglas Holgate. And I have this whole series like the novel so I don't want to read that first, hopefully, <laughs> but, and this comes out in November. When Kyle learns that the world's most famous game maker, Luigi Limoncello, has designed the town's new library and is having an invitation-only lock-in on opening night, he's determined to be there. But the tricky part isn't getting into the library, it's getting out. Because when morning comes, the doors stay locked. 
Kyle and Taylor Tisman solve every clue and figure out every secret puzzle to find the hidden escape route. Will there be laughs? Yes. Will there be surprises? You bet. Will there be fun? Hello, it's a limoncello. <laughs> and then two sequels. Second in the, se in the series, Sir Callie and the Dragon's Roost by Esme Symes Smith. This comes out in November, it says. It is the second, so I'm not going to read the synopsis. But thank you so much. And then the second in the Future Land series, The Nightmare Hour by H.D. Hunter. This comes out in November also. I've read the first book and I absolutely loved it. And I cannot wait to see what happens next. I'm so excited to have this. And then Ready, Set, Doe by Kelly J. Baptiste. This comes out in October. Key sixth grader Zoe Sparks has discovered a unique way to get the laptop of her dreams. To win it. If Zoe can smell more tubs of cookie dough than anyone in her school, the laptop is hers. It's the first step to becoming a prize-winning journalist, but her win-at-all-cost attitude is causing problems with her family and her best friend, Felix. Zoe may be a top cookie dough seller in her class, but is winning the prize really worth it? And then this comes out in September, Something Like Home by Andrea Beatriz Arango. Laura Rodriguez Collin has a plan. No matter what the grown-ups say, she will live with her parents again. Can you blame her? It's tough to make friends as a new kid at school. And while staying at her aunt's house is okay, it just isn't the same as being in her own space. So when Laura finds a puppy, it seems like fake. If she can change the puppy to become a therapy dog, then maybe she'll be allowed to visit her parents. Maybe the dog will help them get better and things will finally go back to the way they should be. After all, how do you explain to others that you're technically a foster kid even though you live with your aunt? And most importantly, how do you explain that you're not where you belong and you just want to go home? And then Like a Charm by Elm Nickel. This comes out in October. After the death of her grandfather, 12-year-old Ramya is gifted with a journal that has only one note. Beware the sirens. Spells and secrets wait as Ramya is hurled into a world where monsters live, dangers hide, and magic is real. Too bad Ramya is the only one who can see it. And then Mr. Whiskers and the Shenanigan Sisters by Wendelin Van Drynen. This is author of the Sammy Key series, which I have quite a few of that. And I really want to read it, obviously. Mr. Whiskers is a streetwise stray with a nose for trouble and a fondness for Misty and Zelda and Anigan, two girls he calls the Shenanigan Sisters. So when Misty and Zelda's profession, professor father is whisked away to, by a suspicious guy who says he's from the FBI, Mr. Whiskers follows that car. Turns out two smart girls and one daring dog make a pretty great detective team. Together they track down clues and unravel a mystery involving family secrets, hidden passageways, and even pirate treasure. It's fur, sure, fur. Instead of four shirts for sure, too complicated to explain to adults. So this dog and trio will have to rescue the professor and catch the kidnappers all on their own. And then the Mona Lisa vanishes. A legendary painter, a shocking heist, and the birth of a global celebrity by Nicholas Day. And it says with art by Brett Helquist. And he's Helquist. Helquist. And he's one of my favorite illustrators, so I'm very excited. I don't know if I said this comes out in October. And this comes out in September. This is the wild, impossible story of how the Mona Lisa was stolen and how it became the most famous painting in the world. Travel back to an extraordinary period of revolutionary change. Turn of the century Paris. Walk its back streets. Meet the infamous thieves and detectives of the era. And then slip back further in time and, fo and follow Leonardo da Vinci, the painter of the Mona Lisa, through his dazzling, wondrously weird life. Discover the secret at the heart of the Mona Lisa. That the most famous painting in the world should never have existed at all. And then Project F by Jean Duprat author of the City of Ember series, which I also have and need to read. <laughs> and this comes out in October. Welcome to the future. There are no cars, planes, televisions, or smartphones. Climate change wreaked havoc on Earth hundreds of years ago, and now people live a simpler life. Then 13-year-old Keith undercovers a secret. It's a mysterious mission known only as Project F. It's exciting, it's big, and it's going to change the world. It's exactly the kind of adventure Keith has always longed to be a part of. And what is adventure without a little danger, right? But how much danger is Keith willing to risk for himself, for his family, for his community, for the entire world? And then Alex Wise versus The End of the World by Terry J. Benton Walker. And this goes on sale September. Alex Wise feels like the world, his world is ending. His best friend is leaving Los Angeles for the summer. His former friend and maybe sort of crush hasn't spoken to him since he ditched Alex on the first day of sixth grade. And Alex's mom is sending him and his annoying younger sister Mags on a cruise with their dad who abandoned them. Then there's a creepy shadow monster that may or may not be stalking him, but none of that can prepare Alex for the actual end of the world. Too bad that's exactly what's coming after the definitely real shadow man kidnaps Mags and she is possessed by the ancient spirit of death, one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Now it's Alex, equipped with mysterious new powers, and his friends versus the otherworldly threats of death, pestilence, famine, and war. Just drive or summer vacation.
Alex is more used to being left behind than to leading the way, but now he's the only one who can save his sister and the world. And then The Evers Forever 12 by Stacy McNulty. This comes out in October. There's so many highly anticipated releases in here. I'm so excited. At the Elite West Archer Academy, all the students are gifted, but four are exceptional. Though the Evers look 12, they're actually centuries old, possessing knowledge and talents that make them extraordinary. And boarding school is the perfect cover for their brilliance and their secret. It's supposed to be an ordinary year in, in the anything but ordinary lives of these kids, until Ivy Stewart shows up. She resembles an ever who went missing more than 70 years ago, and Ivy could be the key to unlocking their curse. But ambitious Ivy is at West Archer to achieve her own extraordinary goals, and nothing will distract her, or so she thinks. With the desperate Evers determined to find answers, and her former classmate, the laid-back cool guy, Ronan, is determined to protect her, Ivy soon finds herself swept up in a mystery only she can solve. Will her life be changed forever and ever? And then lastly, The Dark Lord's Daughter by Patricia C. Reed, who I have books by that sound incredible and I want to read. And this comes out in September. I'll that cover. An ordinary girl and magical inheritance, a choice between two worlds. Kayla is a girl like any other, or so she thinks. When a day at the state fair is interrupted by the news that she's the daughter of the of a dark lord, she and her family are quickly whisked to another world, one that's chock full of magic but lacking in technology. All Kayla wants is to go home, but she must learn magic to do so. The catch? For the dark lord's daughter, the road to mastery magic is filled with evil traditions. As she ventures closer to her father, Kayla must decide whether whether to accept her birthright. Is she destined for darkness or can she become a new kind of dark lady? Thank you so much, Random House Kids. That was so awesome. I've been looking at this series for a while. And this is the second book. And it went down to like $3. So I, that's why I got it first. The Once Upon a Climb series. Happily Ever After is this one. Laurel Sorzonzo. And I'll keep an eye on the first book. And when it goes down, I'll get that too. But just so happy to finally have one. And then the first book in this series went down to like three dollars. The Wolf's Den, book one of the Three Brothers trilogy, Elizabeth R. Jensen. Three brothers, three destinies, three chances to fail. One country hangs in the balance. Peacetime in Etria is no time to be become a knight. War lies in the past and the future is for growing new things. Swords become plows and soldiers become farmers, artists, shop owners, shop owners, and poets. Everyone knows that training for a war that may never come is a waste of time, but for the three grandsons of the greatest war hero in history, knighthood isn't a choice, it's destiny. The three inseparable boys set off on three very different roads to knighthood. The eldest travels the straight path. The middle boy follows the crooked way of the rebel. The youngest, he follows the trail of legend. When war returns all too soon, the boys will be tested. They will hold in their hands the lives of the most powerful, important people of all of Etria. If they fail, their country may fall into darkness and horror. But these boys were born to be knights, to protect their king, land, and people no matter the cost to themselves. In the end, they will give their all, but will it be enough? And then the sequel, I have the first book, and it seems like that one has been out a while before the sequel came out, but Sui and the Shadow, and this was the first one. It's a graphic novel. This is Sui and the Strange White Light, written by Ginger Lane, illustrated by Molly Park. This is the first book which I had forever, so I'm excited that there's a second one. I can just dive straight in. And this was marked down to like $3, so I got it. Jack and the Magic Hat Maker, book one, The Golden Telescope by Tr Tracy Partridge Johnson. 12-year-old Jack Mac Payton's life is miserable. His parents are dead, and he's stuck with his heartless aunt and uncle who make him live in the cold, dank basement until his life takes a crazy turn when he discovers a golden telescope that reveal reveals he has magical abilities. Jack is transported to his ancestral home in Dublin, Ireland, where he learns that he comes from a long line of magic workers and he encounters a dangerous organization called the Dark Cabal, who are responsible for separating him from his brother and sister and who want to use his powers for their nefarious purposes. Plunge into an incredible adventure that brings him into contact with forces more terrifying than he ever could have imagined, Jack is the only person who can help find his grandma Lydia trapped in the past and solve the mystery surrounding his parents' death. Another one that was marked down, so you large, so I got it. Thomas Holland and the Prophecy of Elfhaven by K.M. Doherty. I love this cover. Tom does not believe in magic. For a thousand years, the Prophecy of Elfhaven has predicted the arrival of a boy who would irrevo irrevocably, irrevocably change their world. But what does that have to do with Tom? With his dog, Max? With his robot, Chloe? When Tom's mom and her team of scientists unexpectedly open a portal to another universe, they find a world where magic, not science, rules. And when Tom's robot Chloe is drafted into service to explore that strange new universe, it unleashes a bizarre series of events. Events where dragons, wizards, ogres, trolls, elves, dwarves, magic, and technology collide. 
events that propel Tom headlong towards a war that threatens to destroy Elfhaven. Even with the help of Tom's newfound friends and despite the efforts of his newfound enemies, can Tom save the world or will he inadvertently bring about its destruction? And I was going to say another one, but the next two were also marked down to three dollars. I think it says A Place of Turquoise by Karina Sawfeld. Robert loves spending summer vacations with his chatty bestie party, <laughs> boating and swimming, collecting rocks, and eating candy. Their time at the lake is simply perfect, but the joy turns to confusion when they make it back to the house and the parents are nowhere to be found. Determined to save the grown-ups, who have been taken by a cold, damp shadow to a mysterious world, Robert and party follow a blackbird's instructions to enter a magical turquoise-colored land. And when a wise dog greets them to explain that mom and dad are trapped in a castle with their memories missing, the brave duo fall vows to find the magic sand that can fix everything. As they walk, fly, and dive across the colorful realm, can they rescue their family before they run out of time? And then Amos and Amazing by Ajara Kai. Cover. Now it says is the world's spiciest ice cream. A trip to Chongquin's rural countryside and a strange collection of curious belongings begin this unforgettable tale. That makes this solar punk science fiction and high fantasy for a frilly, thrilling modern fairy tale. I've been wanting this one for a while, so and I finally found it like used for four dollars. Jack of Spades by Sophie Mason. May 1910. Linda's father is missing in Paris, and her only clue is the Jack of Spades car that was sent to their home in London. In the family code, Jack of Spades means danger, but it is not her father's handwriting on the envelope. Setting out to look for him, Linda is soon whirled into the frightening world where nothing is as it seems. Who are the people following her? What was her father really doing in Paris? Who could she really trust? As she works against time to try and solve the mystery of her father's disappearance with the help of some new friends, Linda begins to realize that she has stumbled into a dark and dangerous conspiracy which threatens the future of the whole world. And then Two Friends, One Dog, and A Very Unusual Week by Sarah L. Thompson. All it takes is one pair of silver sequin sneakers, or more precisely, the girl wearing them, to flip Emily's orderly, predictable world upside down. The shoes belong to Ronnie, Rainy, Ronnie, who moves into Emily's apartment building when no one but her lovable dog, Otto. Her mother, a wildlife photographer, is in Patagonia. Emily quickly discovers that Ronnie seems to live by her own set of rules and she gets away with it. Why not bring an ice cream truck to school? Or bungee jump off their apartment building? Ronnie's ability to find fun even in life's dullest moments feels impossible to Emily and more than a little irresistible. And then this stack is from an Amazon sale that I stumbled upon and it was buy three for the price of two. Actually, no, this one wasn't in the sale. So after this one, that's that. It's another sequel, it's a graphic novel. The second, the Cat's Cradle series, The Mole King's Lair by Joe Rio. Yes, real. I love the first book, and she's one of my favorite illustrators. She wrote and illustrated this, so I'm very excited to continue. And then some other sequels I got that were in the sale were, I think it's the second in the Thieves of Shadow books. This is Seeker of the Fox by Kevin Sands. So excited. And then the second, Society of Explorers and Adventurers. Shinji Takashi, Into the Heart of the Storm by Julie Kagawa. Oh, some graphic novels that were included in the sale. Stepping Stones by Lucy Kinsley. I've been wanting this for so long. Jen is used to not getting what she wants. Jen did not want to leave the city. She did not want to move to a farm with her mom and her mom's new boyfriend, Walter. She did not want to leave her friends and her dad. And she definitely did not want to get two new sisters. And the companion to this one, an apple crush. So excited to finally have these. Same with this one I've been wanting forever. Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy, a modern graphic retelling of Little Women by Ray Tercerio and Brew Bray and Diva Indigo. Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy are having a really tough year. Not only is their father overseas with the military and their mother working overtime to make sure ends meet, but each girl is struggling with her own unique problems. Whether it's school woes, health issues, boy troubles, or simply feeling lost, the March sisters all need the same thing support from each other. By coming together and sharing lots of laughs and tears, these four young women find the courage to discover who they truly are as individuals and as a family. How to Train Your Dad by Gary Paulson. And all it says is a laugh out loud misadventure about a boy, his free thinking dad, and the puppy training pamphlet that turned their summer upside down. <laughs> the Summer of June by St. Jamie Sumner. June Delaney kicks Summer off with a bang when she shaves her head and sets two goals. She will beat her anxiety to become the lion she knows she is instead of the mouse everyone sees. And then she and her single mom will own their power as fierce, independent females. With the help of Homer, 
Juarez, the poetry reciting soccer star who believes in June, even when she doesn't believe in herself, she starts a secret library garden and hatches a plan to make her dreams come true. But when her anxiety becomes too much, everything she's created begins to fall apart. It's going to take more than a haircut and some flowers to set things right. It's going to take courage and friends and watermelon pie. Forget second chances. This is the summer of new beginnings. It's already getting kind of long, so I'm not going to say much. It's the end of the world and I'm in my bathing suit by Justin A. Rounds. 12-year-old Eddie Gordon Holloway has concocted his most genius plan ever to avoid his least favorite chore, the dreaded L-A-U-N-D-R-Y. If he wears every item of clothing in his wardrobe, Sovereign will be halfway over before he has to do laundry. On the day of the highly anticipated beach bash, Eddie ends up grounded until he can get his clothes clean. While left home alone to do his laundry, the power goes out mid-cycle. With his first load of laundry soaking wet and the rest still filthy, Eddie sets out to explore the seemingly empty neighborhood in just his swim trunks and flip-flops. As he meets up with other neighborhood kids to find out what happened, they realize that their families aren't coming back anytime soon. And as night falls, the crew realizes that they are just only a people left in the world. They might be the only people left anywhere. When You Reach Me by Rebecca Steve. When Miranda starts receiving a mysterious note, she doesn't know what to do. The notes tell her that she must write a letter, a true story, and that she can't share her mission with anyone, not even her former best friend, Sal. It would be easy to ignore the strange messages, except that whoever is leaving them appears to have an uncanny ability to predict the future. And if that's the case, Miranda has an even bigger problem because the notes tell her that someone needs saving and she might be too late to help. And Fuzzy Mud by Louise Shatter. Tamea doesn't understand why her neighbor Marshall is suddenly acting so weird and she really doesn't understand why she's following him into the woods. Marshall never thought he'd be picked on every day and he definitely never thought he'd take a shortcut through the off-limit woods to avoid a run-in with the school bully. Mud. Normally harmless, not usually covered with fuzz. The Disaster Days by Rebecca Behrens. Anna Steele loves living on Pelly, an Italian tiny island near Seattle. She's always felt totally safe there. So when she's asked to babysit after school one day, it's no big deal. Zoe and Oscar are her next door neighbors and Hannah just took a babysitting class, but she's pretty sure makes her an expert. She doesn't even worry that she left her inhaler at home. Then the shaking begins. The terrifying earthquake only lasts four minutes, but it changes everything, damaging the house, knocking out the power, and making cell service non-existent. Even worse, the ferry and the bridge connecting the kids to help and their parents are both blocked, which means they're stranded and alone. Hannah's in charge as things go from bad to worse. Morning Sun in Wuhan by Yang Cheng Compass Time. 13-year-old May remembers so many things her mother said and did. Now, a year since her death, she cherishes those memories more than ever. Her doctor father works nonstop at an overcrowded hospital, and has, and as a mysterious virus spreads through Wuhan, May finds herself alone in a locked-down city with little but her love of cooking and computer games to comfort her. Very intrigued. Doesn't say much, but intrigued. Ellie Engel save, saves, and the world's crossed out and puts herself by Leah Johnson. I'm gonna get her back to soon. Ellie Engel doesn't stand out. Not at home where she's alone with her pet fish since her dad moved away and her mom has to work around the clock. Not at the bakery where she helps out old Mr. Walker on the weekends, and definitely not to school where her best friend Abby, the coolest, boldest, most talented girl in the world, drags Ellie along on her never ending quest to make her mark. To someone else, a life in the shadows might seem boring or lonely, but not to Ellie. As long as she has Abby by her side and a comic book in her hand, she's quite content. Too bad life didn't bother checking in with Ellie, because when a freak earthquake hits her small town, Ellie wakes up with the power to bring anything back to life with just her touch. And when a video of her using her power suddenly goes viral, Ellie's life goes somewhere she never imagined, or wanted, straight into the spotlight. Lotus Bloom and the Afro Revolution by Sherry Winston, who's also the author of a new release. I realized after the fact. Lotus Bloom just wants to express herself with her violin, her retro style, and her peaceful vibe, not to mention her fabulous hair. This school year, Lotus is taking her talent and spirit to the seventh grade at a new school of the arts. The one where she just might get to play under the famous maestro, a violin virtuoso and conductor of the orchestra. But Lotus's best friend, Rebel, thinks Lotus should stay at their school. Why should this fancy new school get all the funding and pull the brightest kids out? Rebel wants Lotus to help her protest, but Lotus isn't sure. If she's going to be in the spotlight, she'd rather it be her music. Then, but when boys throw paper wads and airplanes into Lotus's afro, Lotus finds herself in trouble for a dress code violation. Lotus must choose, so she stay quiet and risk everything she's worked so hard for, including her beloved hair, or put aside her peaceful vibe to fight back. Another Gary Paulson book. This might be the last book he wrote before he died. Or it might have been the other one. I think it was this one. North Wind. When a deadly plague reaches a small fish camp where he lives, an orphan named Leaf is forced to take to the water in a cedar dugout canoe. He flees northward, following a wild 
shored, riven shore, thrown from one danger to the next, unsure of his destination. Yet the deeper in his journey he paddles, the closer leaf comes to his truest self as he connects to the heartbeat of the ocean, the pulse of the sea. Hints of Nordic mythology and his irresistible narrative pool. Completed shortly before the author's death. And then The Switch by Roland Smith. On the day after Henry Ludd's 13th birthday, the power goes out. No phones, no news, people descending into lawlessness. And in the chaos, Henry's father has gone missing. Determined to find him, Henry ventures out with a trading crew to the place where his dad was last seen. But when the truck is hijacked and Henry is left behind, he is forced to travel alone. With only himself to rely on, can Henry survive this dangerous new world? The Puttermans are in the house by Jaquetta Namara Feldman. Seventh graders Sammy and Maddie are in the Putterman are the Putterman twins, the perfect team of two. But Maddie has a secret he's not ready to share with his family yet, and he suddenly quits baseball and stops talking to his sister. With her twin telepathy broken, Sammy doesn't know what to do without her teammate. Becky Putterman is sick of her family only cheering for her cousin Sammy and Maddie. They all used to be friends, but since everything became about the twins, Becky's felt left out. With her Bob and Spill around the corner, she hopes it'll finally be her turn in the spotlight. But the Hurricane Harvey but then Hurricane Harvey hits Houston, Texas, and the twins' house is damaged in the flood. Their family moves in with Becky's, putting all nine Puttermans under one roof definitely. Sammy, Maddie, and Becky need each other now more than ever, but as their grief, anger, and uncertainty grow, can they find a way to glue their family back together? And then The Graveyard Riddle by Lisa Thompson. I don't think I ever would have bought it with the UK cover. It just wasn't my style, I guess, but I love this cover. It's a US edition, obviously. Melody Bird has discovered an abandoned old building in the corner of the graveyard. Though it's dark and creepy, she can't resist its pull. When she goes to explore, she finds a mysterious boy hiding out there. Hal tells Melody that he's a spy, using the house as a base for his undercover surveillance of a nearby suspected criminal. He's very secretive about the details, but Melody comes to trust him and starts helping him with his mission. Melody is determined to decode the strange riddles hidden in the graveyard, but her friends Matthew and Jake question Hal's story. Maybe Hal himself is the biggest mystery at all. The companion to the goldfish boy says, I don't know if they're going to have come out with a matching cover for that, but I think it's that yet. It said just a companion, so. And lastly, for the Amazon sale, Clementine by Anne Hood. Meet Clementine. She's quippy, sarcastic, and smart. But since her younger sister's death, Clementine is consumed by overwhelming guilt. Was it her fault that Haley died? As Clementine and her mother attempt to continue their lives after Haley's death, the world around them changes. Clementine's best friend now feels like a stranger. Her new school is full of spoiled, carefree kids. Though she tries to learn to live in the moment again, she can't escape the snow globe that's forming around her. The real world is out there while she's stuck in a place where tears constantly fall. And it's going to be hard if you've ever felt this type of grief. An extraordinary story of grief, guilt, and asking the important question, how can you find the will to live again in the face of overwhelming despair? The rest were in an anticipated release videos. I've already read the synopsis, so I'll just show you what I got. The Brave Girls by Sherry Winston who wrote, was the one that wrote the um, Lotus book that I mentioned earlier. Vivian Lance's Second Chances by Catherine Ormsby. When Giants Burn by Beth Rabel. The Gray by Chris Barron. 102 Days of Lying About Lauren by Maura Shortner. The Islands of Elsewhere by Heather Fawcett. The Hunt for the Hollower by Kelly C. Miller. And lastly, A Season Most Unfair by J. Anderson Coates. All right, that's it, finally. <laughs> I'm not saying finally like I'm unhappy, but that's a lot to talk. <laughs> See any that you're excited about that are coming out, like the arcs that haven't come out yet that you want to read? Are there any in here that are out that you didn't know about then you're excited about them now are there some that you've read already did you like them did you not let me know in the comments and i hope you enjoyed the video and if you would like to subscribe i would love that if you'd like to and i'll see you in my next video bye